Right, for this tutorial, we are going to look at creating a basic timer. Now, um, this is a test environment I got. So it's basically got four uh, rooms in total. So you can see I got a menu room, I got an end, and I got room one, and I got another one there for a level. Now, we're not actually going to use uh, most of these. In fact, I tell you, we are going to use room one, the menu, and the end, um, but not in the way you think. So if I just show you what I got in this game so far. At the moment, when the game loads, we go to the menu. If I click on play, you can see then we have a score counter. We've got lives, health, and if I did go around, and let's say, for example, I grabbed one of these things here, you can see my score increases there. Now, I've also got these enemies, and if I hit an enemy, you can see my health goes down. Now, normally these would move, but I've made them static objects just to show you that things are moving and things are working rather. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a timer. So I'm going to put the time at the top here, and we are going to have it count down. So after, say, 30 seconds or 60 seconds, whatever, if I don't complete the maze within that time, I lose the level. Okay, so how do we do this? Right, well, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I am going to add in a new object in my level one, because this is going into my level one. Now, let's say, for argument's sake, you are going to have, consistently, you can have 60 seconds on every single level you've got. Then, potentially, you could make one object and just throw it into each level, or you can put it inside your game manager, depending on how you've coded this. But on this tutorial, so I'm gonna start with scratch, what we're gonna do is on level one, I'm gonna go right click create, let's go to object, and I'm gonna say O timer L1. So O timer level one, there's gonna be no sprite for it, that's fine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new variable inside here. So the variable that we're going to create is going to be called timer. And I'm going to give it a value of 30. Now, the reason I'm giving it a value of 30 on this level, I only want to give the a player 30 seconds. If you obviously wanted it to be 60 seconds, you change this value to 60. Or if you wanted two minutes, you change it to 120 and so forth. So let's keep it at 60 seconds for now. What we're gonna do then is we need a way for this timer to count down. Now, the way we're gonna do this is we are going to use an alarm. So an alarm is an event which we can trigger every so often. So if you notice on the side here, I've got set alarm countdown. Let's drag that in and you can see it's preset to set alarm zero and then the countdown is 30. So I'm gonna change that to countdown 60. So what that means is every 60 frames and this game version of game maker works on frames per second and by default it's 60 so every one second we're going to get it to do something now because this is in the create event this will only ever run once but it, we need it to start the process so what we're going to do is tell it right when the time is created give it a value of 60 and then after one second, start the countdown. So what are we gonna do in alarm zero? So if we click on the add event, go to alarm, alarm zero, what we're gonna do is use the variable timer and we're gonna say minus one relative. So that's gonna take one off the timer. Now, if we don't add this back in again and change it to 60, what will happen is the timer will only ever work once. So it'll go from 60 to 59, and then it'll stop at 59. This code here basically resets the timer again. So it says, right, okay, after we've taken one off the timer, run the timer again. So you can see now we have this constant loop until we basically stop it. So what we now need to do is output this timer somewhere. So I'm gonna use a draw GUI and I'm gonna use my drawing tools here and I can say draw value, time left, and then timer. 
okay? Now at the moment, this is set to zero, zero, but as you have already seen in my room, if I just play this very quickly, it's not gonna damage the game or anything like that. As you can see, I've already got score in zero, zero, so I'm gonna need to put it over a little bit here for you to see. And what I'm gonna do is just go into my room for a second. So I'm gonna probably put it over about here, so say 200 over. So let's go X is zero, so it's gonna be right to the top, and the Y then we'll put it, say, 200. I thought, let's put it 250, we'll move it over a little bit more. Now, at the moment, nothing will happen because we haven't added it to the room. So the next thing we're gonna do is go back to room one, and I'm gonna add in a new layer, and I'm just gonna call this timer. If you didn't see what I did then, I added an instance layer, and I've just renamed it by right clicking rename. And all I'm gonna do is drag this new timer in and just leave it go. It doesn't matter where I put it. But let's just play this now and see what happens. So if I click on play now, oh, I've done it wrong, look, I've put it down, but you can kind of see that is working. So you can see time left and it's counting down. Let me just change that very quickly because I've made a bit of a mistake there. Instead of putting it in the X, I put it in the Y. Okay, there we are. So you can see now that's counting down there. 59, 58, 57 and so forth. And obviously it's in keeping with the other things here we i will show you how to change the uh, text as well make it look a little bit nicer uh, in a moment as well so you we can see this is just going to count down now and eventually it will reach zero and we'll see then what happens when it reaches zero now to speed this up what i'm going to do is just change the create event instead of 60 we're going to put it to 20. otherwise this video is going to take a long time to load okay so let's play so you can see it starts at 20 now and this alarm will be a little bit quicker. So every second, this alarm is running, it's rerunning and running and running and running. So watch what happens now when we hit zero. It's three, two, one. And then it goes into negative numbers and it obviously counts up then. So we have a little bit of an issue because We've got the timer working, but we haven't said what happens when the timer reaches zero. Now, in order to do this a little bit of justice, what we're going to do in the timer here, I am going to use a step event. Now, a step event checks every second of the game, whatever the code is. So let's say for argument's sake, we are going to use an if statement here. So we're going to say if the timer is equal to zero, so if the timer is ever gets to zero, then what we need to do is go to room. So all I've typed then the toolbox is go, and you can see I've got go to room. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna go to the end. So this is like a, a death room and a game over room, whatever you wanna call it. So if we play this now, okay, so the play button comes up, that's good. Let's go play. And you can see now we've got the countdown working, which is lovely. Everything else will still work as well, so uh, we can go around and we can collect something. Like so. So we've got eight, seven, six. Here we go. Four, three, two, one. And straight away it's gone out of my death room, so I know that timer is working. So I basically have proven to you there that it goes to the game over screen. Now, if we did have buttons there and we started it again, the timer would always restart because we have the variable there that we call timer and we set it to a value. Now, let's say for example, if you wanted this timer to be on every room, then all you can do is you need to drag this object into every single room. And that then will allow you to have that timer in that specific location in that room. And if you were gonna do that, I'd advise you to put it in inside something like a game manager. What you might want to do though, is have different timers for different levels, because a level might be a bit more complex. 
Now, one more thing that I will show you. If you look at the game, there's two more things actually. If you look at the game, um, you can notice on the health there, I've used a health bar. And on the timer there, look, you can see the timer's counting down, that's fine. So we can actually change this value here. Instead of having a number, we actually have a little bar going down. So how would we do that? Well, if I go back to my draw GUI, and you'll notice there is a draw health bar. Now, what I'm going to do on this one, you don't need to do this. You only need to do this if you wanted a bar going down instead of a number counting down. So what we want is a value. Now, the value with this health bar, it always um, represents a value. Think of it like 100%. So we need to turn the value into a percentage. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you notice in another object here, I've used the health bar, but there. So what we're going to do is we are going to do this. In the value, we're going to use the variable timer. And I'm going to divide it by 60 and then multiply by 100. Now, the reason I do that is I want to divide the timer by the total. And then whatever that is, I'm going to multiply it by 100 to give me a percentage. Now, you'll notice I've got a left, top, right, bottom. These are coordinates that I need to put in to make sure that I've got a nice health bar in my game. Now, this does take a little bit of fiddling. So if you just watch what I'm going to do now, but this might be different in your game. So if I were to play this, nothing's really going to happen here. You're not going to really see this. You may see a line in the corner. No, I don't even see that. So what I want is the health, the bar to just be over here a little bit. And it's going to automatically move down like I've got the health bar. So how do I do this? Well, if you notice, I've already got the health bar here. So you can see top is zero, top will always be at the top, bottom there 30. So I know, for example, the bottom is going to be 30. And what we need to do is move it over. Now, add a bit of a guess. If the draw value starts at 250, going over from the left, that's probably going to be at least 300. And going over then from the right, we'll say 500 as an example. Now, I don't know these because I haven't looked at these in the past, so I don't know if they are going to be right. Now, what we need to do as well is work out the minimum color and the maximum color. Now, if we're looking at health, you could use green and red. Don't mind, whatever. For this example, I'm going to just use a light blue and we're going to use then a slightly darker blue. Okay, so let's play that, see what it does. Now, purposely, I've left the timer in. Okay, so you can see this is too far over, but you can see my point there. This is actually working and it is counting down. So let's just change this very slightly. So we need to move it over. So instead of the left there being 300, 300 is not big enough. So let's go to 350. Okay, so again, not too bad. That's th that is working. Um, you might want to extend the other way then a little bit. But you can see it is working. Now, one thing I have left in. You can see I've left the variable timer in here. I don't need it anymore if I'm going to be using this health bar. So let's extend that a little bit, so 550. And there you have it. It'll now work and it'll count down as the 
variable gets its value taken off. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you have a number displayed or whether you use one of these bars. They'll work in exactly the same way. It is just purely for a visual for your game, depending on what you want. If you wanted the number to go down or if you wanted something like this to go across. The only one other thing to show you is if you wish to change the font type to make the font look a little bit different. Now this will change depending on um, what your game looks like. I'm just looking now here, you can see the health of the time bar there, look, is changing color. It's gone a little bit lighter than it originally was. And here we go. Gone, lovely. Okay, so what happens if you want to make the font stand out and look a little bit different? Well, if you notice, you've got a font uh, folder on the right hand side here. If we right click on it, go to create, and then go to font, I'm going to just call this uh, font headings. All right. Now, on here, I can choose the type of font I want. If I was you, stick with the standard font because they typically are going to be on every PC. So if you did move PCs and go somewhere or try another computer or a Mac or whatever, it'll work. So if you stick with a standard font, that's fine. The size, obviously you can size it up to whatever you want. You can also to make it bold, regular, whatever. So I'm going to actually purposely make this bold and make it a bit bigger. Now, once you've done that, the font is made and you can see it says in here, now the good news is it's really easy to use this font. What you do is you go to the top of your, wherever you've got these draw GUIs and you basically add one of these red blocks in. This red block here, look, set font color, or set font, sorry. And then you change by clicking the asset changer. Now you'll notice I've just added that set font into the game manager. Now, if you set it somewhere, the way Game Maker works is it sets it throughout. Now, if I just play this just to show you what can happen and probably has happened here. Lovely. Okay, so I've now made these fonts a little bit bigger and you can probably see there's a little bit of an issue. So this is a little bit of an issue where now that timer bar here is too close. So you will probably need to make some sort of adjustment here as well. So let's just go into the old timer. And notice that the set font isn't in here. It's fine, because once it's been set here, it's fine. If you did have a different font, and I'll just show you this now, if we were to create a different font for our timer, So let's change this with our font timer. And for the font timer, we are gonna have Aerial Narrow. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to show you how you would have a different font somewhere. So you'll notice in my game manager, I've got the set font there. We add another set font into the old timer. Now, when we play it, what you'll have then is two different fonts. Now, you really have to look at this subjectively because um, it might make your game look a little bit odd. But again, it is your choice depending on what you want. If you can justify it, that's absolutely fine. Now, you might need to move the font over a little bit so you can see on the font here because it's a little bit smaller than the other one I can shift it over if you did need to shift any of these all you do is you change the values here or you can change the values here so you can either make the health bar a little bit, sorry the score bar a little bit bigger or you can move the draw value over a little bit as well so in a nutshell that is how you would add in a timer you can either do it by uh, having a number uh, deducting or you can use a health bar